Mr. Wilson Teaches Do-It-Yourself Homemade Watercolor Set. Um, today we're going to be working with some materials that you should have around your house to try and create watercolors um, for those who aren't able to go out and get them. Um, so I have tons of stuff out here and this lesson is actually going to be pretty fun because a lot of it is just experimenting and figure out what works for you and there's really not a right or wrong answer in what's going to make color so it'll be fun for you to try some different things out. Um, some things you will need so to make the uh, food coloring, watercolors. You're gonna need baking soda, white vinegar, uh, corn syrup, corn starch, and the food coloring. You're also gonna need some sort of tray to put them in. So you can use these um, egg carton, and rip that in half, or you can use an ice cube tray. Um, or if you have your own palette, you could use something like that. Um, you're gonna need something to measure out the materials. Um, so I've got um, a tablespoon, as well as a whisk and a spoon and some stirs, you know, basic cooking things that you need to make um, for the ingredients. Um, I also have a variety of spices that I pulled out. Um, so I grabbed a bunch. I don't know what's going to work and what's not, so we're going to test them out together and see. Um, I do know there's a few that usually make some pretty good color. Um, coffee, cocoa, uh, let's see, paprika, ground mustard, ground turmeric. Um, things like this usually work pretty good. If they have a strong color or pigment in their dust form, chances are they're going to make a good color. There's also a couple things on mine of working with um, more live. Uh, foods like red cabbage, um, raspberries, blueberries, um, beets, and beet juice. So there's some interesting stuff that you can find online. Um, but we're just going to stick with the spices and dry mediums and just see what we can come up with. Um, so we're going to go through how to make the colored watercolor first, and then we're going to do the washes using the spices. And then I'll show you the project we're going to create using all those materials. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is try and make some homemade um, vibrant watercolors. Um, so to do this, it's a couple ingredients that you'll have around your house or could easily get at a grocery store. Um, it's going to be really similar if you ever did the science project where you made the volcano um, fizz up. We use similar ingredients for that. Um, so the first ingredient we're going to start with is our baking soda. Um, so for the paints, this calls for four tablespoons of that. I'm just going to start by putting the four in. And hopefully this doesn't make all of this you all over the table here. All right, so there's our four tablespoons of the baking soda. And then next we're gonna be using two tablespoons of the white vinegar. And I'm using the white because I don't want any colorants to be in there, but really it wouldn't make a difference which vinegar you have. So whatever you have lying around is fine. Okay, and then we're going to combine these two together, which is going to create a chemical reaction here. And this is going to make this cloudy pigment, so I'm going to mix it through and let it settle down. And it should come out like a milky color if you're doing it right. I'll bring this a little closer to see the color. And I'm waiting for all the chemical reaction to go down so I've lost all my fizz, which is good. And then we're going to be combining the other ingredients, which is two tablespoons of cornstarch. Cornstarch is a thickener, so this will help thicken the paint up. All right, so there's two tablespoons of that. And then it also calls for a half tablespoon of corn syrup, which I have here. So they sell the corn syrup, the caro syrup, either dark or light. It doesn't really matter which one you get. It's another just thickening agent. I'm going to mix this up together. This will thicken out the color. And because I use a darker corn syrup, it's changing the pigment a little, but the food coloring will take it over, so it's really not a big deal. You should get what sort of looks like an evaporated milk, or like an eggnog type of color tone.
And then I'm going to divide this up into my container here. I'm just going to pour a little bit into each one. Or just so you can see about how much that makes. You can see it's almost to the top there. So if you wanted to make more than just four colors, you could easily spread that out and make a bit more. You can always double the ingredients if you want to fill up a whole size ice cube tray here. And then we're going to get our food coloring out. So this is just basic food coloring. And it really doesn't take a lot of food coloring. You can mess around with how vibrant you want your colors. I'm just going to start with one. I've got a straw here to stir, but really anything works. And I'll test this on paper and show you on the camera so you can see exactly what it looks like. So what's nice about this Um, food coloring we're making is it'll solidify. So this will turn into a watercolor cake. So it'll solidify into, overnight that is, into a harder substance. And then all you have to do is wet your brush and go right on top and you can re-pick up the pigment. So you don't have to use this right away. Green. And based off your knowledge of color theory, you can also mix these and create your own. I think the back of the box, most of those food coloring will also tell you what the combinations is for colors when you're baking. Alright, so I've got my four colors here, basic set. I'm going to take a sheet. Let's just sort of look at the differences and I'll show them to you on the, to you on the screen here. And this is on each color, I did one to two drops. So I really didn't go too crazy with the color. So I want to have that watercolor look to it, which when I hold this up to the screen, you'll really be able to see. And if you go much more vibrant, you're gonna bring it more to a temperate area. Um, you can also add egg yolk to the mixture. And that helps give it like a temperate feel and thicken it up a little more. Yeah, like I can already tell the red could really use some more pigment too. I'm starting to get almost an orangish tone. I'm going to bring this up to the camera so you can see. So these are our four washes that we were able to create. So they really do come out very similar to watercolor that you would buy in a store. Um, you can blend them and use them just like any other type of watercolor. And like I said, they'll solidify and you can use them again. Um, so there's that first set. Those are the homemade vibrant colors. Um, and then I'm going to walk you through the experimentation with the spices. Okay, so welcome to um, the next section of the video. So the first part we showed was just some basic um, how to create vibrant watercolors using some household um, materials and food coloring. So that's what these first four are um, on this test paper. And now we're gonna work with some more natural um, colorants. So these are all spices and things that I pulled out of our cupboard here. So I'm gonna be writing down what they are um, as we test them out. But basically the process is pretty much the same for every single one. We're going to just put a little bit into the ice cube tray. So we're gonna, this one we're starting with is the ground turmeric. So it really doesn't take a lot. And then we're gonna be using a brush to add a little bit of water in, mix it up. So we're just doing tests right now to see does it create a color. And then we're going to be pulling on our sheet and seeing what kind of color we can get out of it. So depending on the spice itself, you might have to grind it up. So 
So if you have an actual mortar and pestle, that helps. If you don't have that, um, you can also just take a plastic bag, put the spice in, take a hammer and lightly hit it and sort of break it up that way. Or a meat tenderizer. So our first color here, underground turmeric. So that one um, left behind a little bit of texture, but it did give us like a nice orangey color. Let's see what our allspice does. I guess the fun part about this is too, is the smell is that you're going to get out of it. So this one doesn't really seem like it's deteriorating much either, but it is giving me like a light brown pigment. You can also sift through all these so you can run the pigment through like a paper towel if you wanted to see um, all those textures get out of there. My plan is sort of go with the texture and let it be a part of the piece. Alright, let's try some chili powder. So when I looked at this I was hoping we get some sort of red out of it, but I really don't know what to expect. I've never tried using this before. So we'll see if it actually even produces color. I've never worked with it. So I'm getting sort of like a reddish orange out of it, almost like a burnt sienna color, which is nice for the landscape we're going to be making. All right, so that's my chili powder. All right, let's go with ground mustard. So ground mustard I have worked with before and it usually makes a really nice pigment for painting with. This one is usually a little more consistent than the other ones. Just made a nice like light yellow wash. our ground mustard. Now we're going to try paprika. So I've also heard a lot of good things about paprika. It's a really fine powder. So it should be giving us brush here, a reddish tone. You also might want to mess around with the water to spice ratio. Just something as you go and work with the material, maybe you'll start to understand a little better. So it looks very similar to the chili powder, but it's that reddish tone. And so far, as they dry, the ground turmeric is making a really nice color. Here's our paprika. All right, let's try cinnamon. It'll be interesting to see what you come up with at home to use. I'm sort of at the mercy of what's in the house here. I didn't go out and get anything special for this. And I would say 50% of the spices, I couldn't even tell you what they're used for or what we cook with them, but they're here, so they must have been for something. All right, so the cinnamon's not really releasing much color at all. This one looks like it needs to be worked a little more. It's very grainy compared to the other ones. Like it's almost not absorbing. So that might be nice for some texture. And it is the darkest of my colors so far. I'll probably end up using that a little bit. All right, so this one I really don't know if it's going to work. This is dillweed. I have a feeling no color is going to come out of this, but I thought it's worth a try and I would like a green um, when I make my piece. So. We'll see what happens with it. I have a feeling it's just going to be water with some grass basically in it. Yeah, it's not really producing much of anything. It's a very, very, very light green. Almost not really worth it. 
Yeah, the more I drag it over, I'm getting a little bit of color out of it, but not much. All right, another one I thought I would try that I really didn't know if it would work or not is pepper. This is black pepper. Whoa, that was a lot. Okay, this one might be a little crazy. And again, I don't know if this is just going to stay clumps or if it's actually going to produce any color out of it. Oh, it's actually producing like a brown color. It's not bad. It's definitely not black. Um, so I did read online if you're going for black charcoal is actually the best thing to go with. All right, and now we're going to go with some of the more reliable ones. I've got hot cocoa and I have my coffee mix. Let's start with the hot cocoa. Well, I guess it's not hot, the cocoa. Ooh, this one smells the best, that's for sure. Cocoa is really making a pretty consistent color there. I'm going to try the same thing with coffee. So I actually don't have ground coffee. I've got the coffee pods though. So if you just cut them open, you can actually use them like the regular coffee. If you don't have regular coffee at home. Um, you can also brew the coffee as well beforehand. Hot water seems to work best for all the spices because it helps sort of melt them down, make them more usable. This one smells really good too. Alright, so there's our coffee. I've heard tea works very well too, depending on what color tea. Actually, I might have green tea. Let's look and see. Nope, looks like just gray tea. No green tea. All right, so there's our hot cocoa and coffee. All right, so there's all of our dry ingredients. You can see some of them are pretty textured, but some of them got pretty dark, so I'm really liking the ground turmeric, that orangish color there. The ground mustard has like a really light, nice tone. Looks like the coffee and hot cocoa. Um, so I'm going to go through these and sort of decide what I want to use in my landscape and what's going to work. And I'm going to mix up some more of just those specific colors. Um, there's a few. And now that the dough is drying, you can see it did make a little bit of color on there. Um, so you can decide once you make your master sheet of all the things you want to make. Um, you can also, you know, go with the first version of the more vibrant colors. But I want to keep my landscape all natural. Um, so... You'll have some fun with this, and there is uh, other stuff you can just pull from your fridge and try. Who knows what will happen. Um, so try to water down some things and see what you get out of it, and then we will uh, go from there, okay? All right, so we're about to start the project. Um, what I did is I mixed up the spices that I liked um, color wise from our chart. So I ended up settling on chili powder. I'm um, doing a ground mustard, ground turmeric, coffee, cocoa. Um, and I kept messing around with other materials around the house and I found that soy sauce actually makes pretty nice color. Um, so those are the ones that I'm going to be using for this project. 
I start by getting um, a piece of paper that's on the thicker side. So this is watercolor paper. Chances are you probably don't just have this lying around your house. So just try and find something that's thicker than computer paper um, because it's, it's going to absorb a lot of water. So you want something that's got teeth um, or able to withstand some water on it. And I'm also going to tape off um, a selection or an area or a viewfinding area on the paper and only work in that section. This helps the paper from warping. So you don't really want this to go edge to edge because that's going to affect the paper. So I'm going to actually get rid of some of the surface area, which will then create a mat on its own. And then I won't have to worry about having a mat because this will do it for me. Um, so I'm taping off using masking tape. Um, if you have painter's tape at home, that works really well too. Anything stronger than that, duct tape will probably rip your paper. I want to make sure it's just something to block off or mask an area. So there's my little square I'm going to be working in. I'm going to make sure all these edges are down on the paper. And then this is where that landscape is going to be made. Okay, so I've got a selection of brushes, my water cup, and my pigments, or my spices, all ready to go. And I'm just going to make up a landscape as I go. You can use a picture as a reference if you wanted to follow along with that. And then this is all going to be browns and oranges and yellows, like a sepia tone, like an old timey photo you've probably seen before in a movie um, or found in your grandparents' house. Um, but I'm going to think of these tones as value. So for example, like my ground mustard, that's my white or my light color. And then my darkest tone on here is my soy sauce and the hot cocoa, parts of the ground turmeric too. Um, so when you do this, you really have to sort of think of it that way. If you're looking at black and white image, what's my value range? Um, not necessarily like is a tree brown or not. Don't go based off actual um, object color. So I'm going to start just by wetting the paper. So for the sky, I really don't want tons of color into it. So we call this wet on wet medium. This is when you start with a wet surface before you even add color. And I'm going to pick up some of my ground mustard which is my lightest tone, and sort of brush it in. I'm just adding a light color back and forth. So remember, sky is always horizontal. And then if you wanted there to be clouds, then we're going to have to switch the brush we're using here. So I'm going to switch over to a fan brush, which looks like this. Pick up some ground mustard. I'm just going to plot in and I'm making this look a lot easier than it is to use a fan brush. So this takes some practice to be able to get those lines sort of through. And because this is watercolor, it's sort of going to just take off on me anyway. So I'm not really concerned with it being perfect. So I just want there to be areas where this color is really showing up more than others. And I'll give the illusion that there's clouds sort of rolling through. All right, so there's the basics of the sky. A lot of this is going to be filled in with my mountain range, so I'm really not concerned with the background as it's not going to be seen as much as the foreground. Okay, next I'm going to pull in with some soy sauce and almost draw with it. So I'm going to make this mountain range. And just pull it down away from it. So there's my one mountain. I have another mountain in the back here. Goes up a little higher. Just pull down. And I want these edges to be fairly crisp, but I'm not concerned with it being perfect because I do know the watercolor is going to move a little bit on me. I'm going to take some cocoa and just brush in some different colors in there. I'm going to do a whole layer of cocoa on this one. And you will find this is a lot harder to work than watercolor because a lot of the composition of it is different. So you can see I'm sort of struggling with getting this to look like a solid tone. I don't really want all these brush strokes in here. Um, so sometimes I go with that. So if 
I don't necessarily want brush strokes, but I don't mind texture. I take tools like blotting. I can pull up some of this color right off the paper and then make my own texture. And that helps it to look a little more natural. Whereas a brush is designed to sort of have this smooth linear quality to it. All right, next let's take a bigger brush. I'm gonna paint in with my, how about we use some ground turmeric. This is gonna be a sort of like my tree range that's in the back here. I'm just going to let that set on there for a minute. And while that's going on, I'm going to take some water and just brush it through. So this is going to be the lake that's in front here. Brushing that through, I'm going to pick up just a little bit of the coffee color and just start bringing some of it through nice and light. And then as I add more to it, I'm going to switch to a smaller brush here. Okay, there we go. All right, so you can see even my paper is warping, and this is designed for watercolor, so you're definitely going to get a lot of that. So we just got to let it happen. All right, next we're going to take some chili powder. That's our red here. This is going to be some shrubbery that's in front. I'm sort of blotting it on. This is going to help frame it as well. By frame, I mean visually frame, so I've got my color that sort of outlines and lets this water be water. So now that my mountain's starting to dry back there, I'm going to go back in with some more hot cocoa. I'm going to amp up some of these colors and shapes. Just got a little in the way of the turmeric trees here, so I'm going to re add some of that back in. And I like the tops of these mountains to have a little snow texture, so I'm going to pull out some of the color here. lighten that up so it appears darker towards the bottom. Let's see if we can't get some of the soy sauce to help out with that. All right, so I'm gonna let this have a good layer of drying and then we're gonna go back in and add a little more to it. So let's let it dry and sort of see where we're at. I will show you the next. Okay, so my pieces had a chance to dry um, and there's some parts I'm really 
liking and some that I'm not so much that I'm going to fix up. But you can see it's hard to tell in this lighting, but really the sky came out quite nice with like the clouds rolling through um, and some of the watery effect I got in there. This we need to crisp up a little more as well as the mountains. I'm going to go through and just basically work on another layer. So when you're doing this at home, you're going to need to do the same thing as just take your time and um, work back and forth as things dry. You can also use a hair dryer if you want to speed this up. Um, but really a watercolor, you know, at least the way we're using it right now, the layers are what's going to create the darkness. I'm going to go back in and sort of add in the darker tones I was looking for. I've got my soy sauce and sort of reworking back into in the mountain range here. Couple more spots with the turmeric so it fills in a little more with that texture. Okay, so one of the things we're missing in the original um, first wash is the reflection of the mountain. So I'm going to be taking a little bit of soy sauce and sort of running it, a waterier version of it, into the water here. There's my reflection of that one. Now I gotta have a reflection of that one. We're just pulling some of the colors that used out here into this will give it the illusion that we're getting the reflection of it and same thing with my turmeric i need a little bit of that yellow tone to come into the water give the illusion of a reflection um, so that helps give you that reflective quality so the area I really wanted to work on was this main focus area through here because I worked while the water was still drying I lost a lot of these harsh edges so I really want these to look like there's some sort of like bush or type of grass coming from the foreground into the water or in front of the water so I need there to be a harsh edge so the only way to really get that going is to wait for the water to dry so going back in this R layer is going to help that. All right, so you can see this is starting to separate out a little bit more. And now I'm getting that surface area sort of coming up and you're seeing the difference here. Um, so I'm pretty happy with it. I mean, I could spend a lot more time going through and making each area perfect, um, but for the purposes of just showing you sort of how to get this thing started, it's good. Um, I'm going to let this dry and then I'm going to pull up the tape and show you the finished one and then um, you'll be on your own. Okay, so this has had a little bit of time to dry. It's still not perfectly dry, but enough that we can take it off. Um, I did want to show you too, if you're not happy with some of like the grit that this leaves behind, you can take your finger and sort of remove some of the actual um, sediment from it with the spice itself so you can get rid of some of that or you can work with it um, but now we're going to be taking off our masking tape which hopefully did a pretty good job of masking off the area um, and then I'm going to be cutting on the opposite end of the line here for the finished project um, but these masks depending on if it went over a little bit which mine did of course um, gives it a pretty good area or spacing from the frame. And it also shows the little subtleties that happen that you might not have noticed before. So seeing some of that color change um, up in the top here, it's a lot easier to see once you have a stark white right next to it. Um, so that's the finished landscape. Um, I'd be writing my initials and date down in this side here. Um, and I wish you luck. I'm excited to see what you guys are gonna come up with using your own spices. Um, it's fun to make these charts as well and sort of see what the possibilities are and test different washes. Um, so I think you'll have fun with it and I'm excited to see the finished ones. Good luck. Mm -hmm.